Premiering to Revenue is a place for all like-minded creatives to come together and learn all aspects of a wedding business. I am your host, Phil Beavout, and with me is my ride or die, Brittany. We are wedding filmmakers in New England and love chatting about all things wedding business related. We talk about not just the creative sides of our industry, but the business sides as well. Brittany has a background in business marketing, and in a previous life, I led large-scale teams at nuclear power plants with multi-million dollar budget. We love bringing on guests that are more knowledgeable than us who can bring different insights to the table. Sit back. Grab a pen and get ready to take some notes. You might want to brace yourself too because we have some real, raw, candid conversations with no filters. Welcome to From Ring to Revenue, the Wedding Entrepreneur Academy. Let's get after it. I'm your host, Phil Beabout, with my beautiful wife and co-host, Brittany. I see you added that, Britt. Uh, I'm so excited to introduce our next guest, Christy Rice. For the last 19 years, Christy's obsession with paint and paper have evolved into the innovative and widely recognized brand, Momental Designs. Christy's work has been credited in People Magazine, OK Magazine, Good Morning America, New York Live, The Knot, Inside Weddings, Brides, Vanity Fair, Martha Stewart Weddings, Flutter, You and Your Wedding, Brides UK, along with countless other blogs. Christy's work has also crossed over into fine art and lifestyle markets with licensing and the development of branded product lines for top arts and craft stores nationwide. Her licensed artwork can be found at Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, Walmart, Anthropology, Chatbooks, and more. So let's get after it. Christy, we are so excited to have you on. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm stoked to talk. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be a good convo. Interesting. Oh boy. <laughs> You're like, oh shit. <laughs> Just get uh, right into it. Yeah. So why why don't you why don't we start at the beginning? So how how did everything get started? Honestly, my like origin story is super boring and, and no shade to everyone else who has my origin story, but come on, let's be honest. Like I got married and the thing that I was looking for wasn't existing on the market. So I made it. That's, that's my origin story. You know what I mean? Like, okay. you know, so you found uh, a need and you filled it. There's that's pretty really, much every entrepreneur. <laughs> so <laughs> let me ask you, what was, what was it that you needed? <laughs> so I really wanted super artistic or invitations. Like I wanted my invitations to feel like fine art. I actually was like curious about hand painted invitations. Cause I was, you know, I was an art ed major who really just did that by default because I wanted to maybe get a job. I just really wanted to be a painter for goodness sake. Um, but I was like, Oh gosh, wouldn't it be cool to get hand painted invitations? Like if they had existed, like I would have been able to afford them, please. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't exist. You know, this was back in uh, just, you know, 1999. Okay. When oh, I was planning shit. my wedding. Gosh, I yep. just aged myself so bad. You're talking about the year I graduated high school. Shout uh, out to 99. Left for the Navy in 99. Woo. Oh my gosh. Let's so, go. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it didn't really exist. I think there was like one someone out there like just doing it like painting and then scanning and printing and that was it you know i'll be honest I, i'll be frank i i'm I, I don't mince words maybe i should but it's a dime a dozen you can find it anywhere every stationer is doing watercolor illustration so you know that's been our thing now like how do we you know maintain relevancy in all of that so it's with the hand painting and amongst other things. But yeah, the hand painting is pretty crucial for us. And it's very much a part of our uh, message. Yeah. I mean, beautiful, beautiful work. I like found myself um, checking out your Instagram yesterday and just getting like mesmerized like the, what is it called? ASMR or whatever, where you're just yes. like watching the painting yeah. and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I wish I was talented in the arts department, but I, I just can't. Like I get stuck writing my son his little Star Wars notes in his lunchbox every morning. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't do this every day. 
<laughs> five days of school. It's just too that much. That is so funny. I love it. So let, let me ask you a question. What, what does it feel like to, I don't know, walk into a Target and see one of your products on the shelf? You know, in the beginning, it was like crazy town because, and again, not mincing words here. Cause I think that's what people want <laughs> in the beginning. It was like, you know, you'd bring your whole family and you'd be like, Oh my God, you taking pictures. And then the reality of it sets in, you know, and like, okay, well, how do I actually like monetize, like truly monetize this? Because like when you are licensing artwork or you are working on a product line, the initial like wow factor, the shininess of being kind of like quasi like famous is very alluring. So, but the initial, you know, moments of it, even with, you know, years down the road now, I don't take all the family to Target or wherever it is, but like, I still, like, if I'm in a bookstore, I could be in a random bookstore and I'll be like, honey, honey, it's my husband. I'll be like, look, my book, they actually ordered my book and it's on the shelf and I'll take a picture, you know? So, um, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Like I'd, I'd be proud. Yeah. I'd, (laughs) yeah. I have no shame. None. No. Yeah. I would like, I would, I would like grab the book and just scream in the store. Look what I've created. <laughs> I think I've done that. Do you feel like with all those, I mean, obviously I think that's an awesome thing, but from like taking a different um, look at it, do you feel like that has definitely driven and promoted your business in ways that have benefited you like sales wise and otherwise, or is it just kind of like, I really Something love this question. shiny and new. I love this question because my answer is probably not what you'd expect. So I will say this, our very, very first magazine feature, which I chased a, like a print magazine feature for the first like five years of my business. It was like, I thought like I would get that and then I'd be rich. <laughs> I, I literally thought that like a dumb, dumb. Um, <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> and so we we had our first feature in the not the national like I know like the regional ones don't exist anymore right the regional ones don't exist I don't anyhow know. I don't think so yeah I don't, in I don't the national right. not our first feature it was this invitation like the invitation shot was like huge it took up like two-thirds of the page and I will say that feature got us a ton of traction yeah right got us a ton of business. And I think I expected that of all of my subsequent features. Mm -hmm. And it it really depends on the outlet. It really depends on the outlet. So uh, I'm just going to, is it okay if I call out specific outlets? Because- Okay. Mm-hmm. So like, <laughs> unless they want to turn around and start paying me, you can, uh, you can call out whatever you want. I'll just bleep it out <laughs> in the next is, week. No, <laughs> there's a certain, there's just a certain, like certain outlets, the readers or the viewers or whatever you want to, the subs, whatever resonate differently with their buying patterns. Folks who read the knot, I have, we have found make significant and meaningful buying decisions after seeing something on their blog or on their social media or still in their magazine. Uh, Folks who, you know, are checking out like Vogue wedding features also are making significant buying decisions. Um, other, Other outlets don't have that same resonance. Now, does that mean that the feature was any less like important to our strategy or our growth kind of strategy? No. Um, it just means that, you know, it, we don't want to be a one trick pony when it comes to press features and we don't, they, they do bring us work. They do give us like visual leverage on our site, you know, and someone yeah. pops on our site and they see those certain logos, it makes right. them feel more comfortable. Yeah, it's authority. It's yeah. authority. It's trust. You know, there were quite a few years there where I was doing my own editorials from top to bottom. Um, My last one was in 2019. And obviously we all know why I haven't done one since then. (laughs) Um, And they were just pure, like, I wanted my couples to know that I was an artist. I wasn't just your paper gal. 
Yeah. I was an artist and I was thinking about things from all angles. My goal has in the beginning on social media with press and how I was approaching it, I wanted to go viral, but very quickly I realized, no, I just want to build relationships with the people who were truly listening to my core message. I want to build relationships regardless of how many views it gets. So for me, it's become very much so that like press social media relationship is very much about relationships. And that's where I see more power and actually more, you know, more dollar signs appearing. Let's talk about structure because I, I am, I'm a big fan of process because I'm a dork. What, what do you think one of the biggest challenges creators face are when they're building their business? Well, I think the key word there is create. We're creators. Um, now, Brittany, earlier you said you're not an artist, but you are. It's just a different way in a different realm. So like we're, we're creating, right? Phil, Don't why laugh. are you laughing? He's totally laughing. I know. I am, so there's this movie called This Is The End. <laughs> And every time somebody says something about an artist, it reminds me of, uh, what's his name? James, is it James Franco? Is yeah, his name? James Franco. There's this part where somebody was like, I hate art. He was like, how can you hate art? And he was just like, oh, I hate art. And he was like, do you go to Subway? <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> That's art. <laughs> Put your, and every time somebody says oh, that, well, Brittany's <laughs> like, I'm not an artist. I'm like, oh, she's. She's made she a can sandwich. grab the sandwich. <laughs> She's done the sandwich. She's a fucking artist. Okay. I have something to add to that. And it's about freaking Subway. Yes. I, my husband gets a Subway sandwich and it's either, I'm not even, I'm not even shitting you. It's either this sandwich was made with love and he's like eating it. And he's all about it. He's like, this sandwich was made with love. Or it's like. This sandwich was not made with love, honey. This is not made with love. So <laughs> they just, they just threw that fucking turkey on there like they hated it. <laughs> just... They are not an artist today. <laughs> uh, but no, like well, he goes through like several examples. Like it's just, it. it's just really, it's really, it's a really funny, really funny part. The movie's <laughs> oh great, gosh. by the way. But uh, every, yeah, every time somebody says that, I'm like, oh, you like Subway? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I completely no, just I took it. away from everything you were saying. <laughs> but no, uh, but really, we are we are creators. I don't care what you know what niche you're in in this industry. We are creators. We are cre- you know so we're constantly being pulled between that creative brain and let's face it, our creative brains aren't as structured as our as our business needs them to be. Right. Yep. Yep. So it's that constant, it's, it's just that tension. And I think that is the biggest hurdle, you know, how do I figure out, is it block scheduling? Is it, you know, how do I manage my days? How do I make sure that I'm, you know, lifting myself up, my creative brain up so that I can do the work of being the creative and dreaming big and being the, 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 the dreamer and also being, you know, the builder, I talk right. about this a lot whenever I'm, you know, talking <laughs> about business structure. You, you know, you're either a dreamer or a builder. And that's the other piece of it. The struggle, I think, mostly comes from not either not knowing or not building a structure for your business that allows you to be which one of those you are. Are you the dreamer or are you the builder? This is not my concept. This is a uh, many Con- other people have dreamed this up, but it's so important in creative business. The dreamer, the big thinker, the 30,000 foot thinker, that's me. I'm the, you know, I'm, I'm just all over the place dreaming and thinking and, you know, then you've got your builder and they can't function without one another. So yeah. I think that tension, that struggle, the, the difficulty in our businesses is when we don't figure out which one we are and set up our business so that we can be who we are. For many years, I tried to be both and, and then some, and it just doesn't work. But every yeah. dreamer needs a builder and every builder needs a dreamer. Yeah, no, I, I a hundred percent agree. I was going to say that, um, a lot of these 
you know, whether it's photography, videography, like all these creative style businesses, for the most part, they fail within the first five years. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of that has to do with people uh, are creative. They can create beautiful work. They can do these amazing things and, you know, put together these amazing products, but they don't understand how to run the business side. Mm -hmm. And that's what winds up doing them dirty a few years in. So, yeah, and there is definitely those years where it's just messy and bootstrapping it and strap. Is that the right colloquialism? I'm really bad with colloquialisms. <laughs> I screw them up all the time. Any like, the, 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 the grassroots years, you know, there are going to be those years unless you're fancy and you have investors, but you know, whatever, like let's, we weren't, <laughs> let's be real. I didn't still don't. Um, there are going to be those years, but even it's even so important in those early years to recognize like, okay, this, I am not the builder. I need someone to run my QuickBooks. I need someone to, to do, you know, my P and L's. I need someone to forecast my cash flow for fourth quarter. You know what I mean? Like that's a goal I'm working towards. So um, just knowing that makes, makes your, your early journey so much more powerful and successful. And we will be right back. So you want to start a wedding business, but you don't have any business experience and you're confused just staring at a computer screen? Are you an existing business owner and tired of feeling overwhelmed and underprepared? Three years ago, we were in the same spot and know exactly how you feel. From Ring to Revenue is here to help. Britt and I grew our wedding business into six figures in less than three years. Not because we are tech savvy or know people, but because we are good at business. Click the link in our show notes or bio and get access to two free lessons in our upcoming course. In them, we talk about business structures like LLCs and S-Corps and creating a traffic generating blog. You don't want to miss these free lessons. Welcome to From Ring to Revenue, the Wedding Entrepreneur Academy. Tired of paying an enormous price for your website? Are you paying more than 12 or 13 bucks a month for multiple websites? Because we're not. We use Cloudways. You can pick your own server, pay as you go, no lock-ins, and get a free SSL certificate. Cloudways uses WordPress applications, which are included in the price. Did I mention that they will migrate your website over for you for free? Plans start as low as 11 bucks a month. We run all three of our websites off of a Vulture server through Cloudways, all for half of what the leading website host costs per year for one. Save yourself time and money with Cloudways. Click on our affiliate link below to start your free trial. You'll never look back. We didn't. And now back to the show. If if you wanted to try to identify those gaps, how how do you think that you would go about that? Like, how would you, where, where would you start to map out like, hey, uh, I'm not good at, I don't know, say the P&Ls, balance sheets, uh, you know, revenue forecasting, that kind of stuff. Like where, like when, what kind of honest conversation should you be having with yourself? I actually think it's a lot. It's a great question. I think it's much simpler than maybe we think it is. You okay. know, you know what you suck at. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't like to do, it's what you things, don't. <laughs> it's the things in your business that you like really, really like you put off, you ignore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that, you know, you know what those things are, you know, that what those things are in week one. Yeah. Let's face it. Just because you're a business owner doesn't mean you have to be good at those things or want to do those things. Absolutely not. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was going to say like, I, I definitely like, I'm not good with websites and I have this annual tradition to where for some reason I wind up breaking our website every Thanksgiving. And then I spend the majority of Thanksgiving trying to fix said website, even though nobody is coming to our website on Thanksgiving. They're busy doing their family why thing. Why Thanksgiving? And, you know, like, why I don't, what are you doing on Thanksgiving? I'll tell you exactly why. It's because, okay. like, any time, like, when we had that, like, Christmas time off between Christmas Day and New Year's, he just cannot sit still. He oh. cannot enjoy time off. So mm-hmm. what he does is like, oh, I, I've been meaning to get to this. Let me go fuck up the website and be <laughs> stuck down in the basement all goddamn day. <laughs> and then I'm freaking like, okay, I guess I'll just do Thanksgiving. 
Okay, hold on. Let's not get this twisted. So just for the listeners, we cater in Thanksgiving. So Brittany has to heat some shit up in the oven while I'm downstairs <laughs> slaving away at the computer trying to fix our... She's just setting the oven to 450 and oh, tossing Oh, stop. So. <laughs> no, but the, the truth of the matter, like he just can't sit idle. Like no, he I can't, can't have time that. off. So it ends up biting him. Yeah, in the like ass, I had this bright though. idea on Thanksgiving morning that I wanted to have two contact forms. I wanted to have one for the couple, and then I wanted to have a contact form for the planners. So there was a different set of questions for the planners, ah. different set of questions for the couples. Easy enough. And, hey, yeah, Phil, no, what happened the other day, though? Well, we did have a planner just use the couple form, and I was staring at it, thinking about all the work that I put in <laughs> on Thanksgiving, and they didn't even use it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I don't know what I did to the code, but I jacked that thing up to where it, like, ruined our contact form for the couples. And those are two completely, yeah, unrelated pages. Yeah. (laughs) So, so anyways, that that took took a couple hours to figure out that I had, like, two backspaces in a CSS code. (laughs) (laughs) It was great. Uh, What was I going to say? So I, I, you know, that's actually a really good segue into um, restless reinvention and relentless innovation. What, why, what would you say is the difference between those two? Brittany came up with these questions. Oh my gosh. That question (laughs) is just, it's so funny. I can't really. So my husband is a tech guy, not going to mention company names, but that question is something that has been discussed at our dinner table in the context of like the tech industry. And it's so, those conversations have really informed my approach to business growth. So um, I think one is about, (laughs) it's about focus and intention or the lack thereof, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, of course, you know what I mean? You asked the question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's like having, uh, innovation just for innovation's sake. And that can actually, that can trip up your team that can completely demolish morale in yourself or your team, um, it's a really, really tricky beast. So how do you focus and then stay in that restless reinvention zone? Well, do we want to be in the restless reinvention zone? No. Okay. (laughs) No, well, like, I just think that there's progress and then there's kind of like spinning your wheels. Like you want to do something you want to, I don't, I don't, maybe it's like fixing things that aren't broken or just, you know, um, being inventive just to be inventive, but not really having a plan or a, a true focus or a true North. Like, um, I think, yeah, I think there is certainly, you know, a place for, creatively throwing spaghetti at the wall. I think that is a good thing. And that really, let's call it benchmarking. Let's call it, let's call it, you know, experimentation, whatever. There's a place for that. But if that is all you're doing, or if that is the vast majority of how you spend your time in your business, then that's my concern. And again, that goes back to that word focus. Yeah. And how do, how do we get the focus? I mean, I think that come that that circles back to the relationship between your builder and your dreamer. That is, that is actually the sweet spot of that relationship to strategize, you know, um, dream big, think big about new ideas, but the builder will always be there. Okay. But this was our focus. This is what we said our focus was, you know, so that's, that's such a powerful that relationship, that's where the real power of it is. Right. The checks and balances. It's a checks and balance. Right. Because it is important that they're okay. So 
yes, maybe we do want to be restless at times, but we need to know that we have someone that is reining us in. Right. Or we have a process. Maybe we don't have the someone yet. Maybe we're in those early years, but maybe we have some type of process or some type of like self check and balance that we have established that, that reins us back in from it just being just restless for the sake of being restless. Does that make sense? It does. I I feel like it's kind of, like you said, a little bit tricky because I think a lot of creatives don't want to have these, like, they don't want to be boxed in. They don't want to have, (laughs) they don't want to have like these parameters because that stifens their creativity or whatever. But at the end of the day, like you have to have something that pulls you back in, something that's going to check like, hey, we're losing too much time. We're not making money by just being, I don't know, like. No, I, you're, you're, head, you're, you're, you're there. So I think a couple of the things that I do and that I didn't always do, I learned the hard way is. I hate to bring it down to money, but I got bills. I'll just give you an example. I know. See, this is what creatives do. See, do you hear me? I I still do it. I hate to bring it down to money. No, you have to bring it down to money. Yeah, I got a mortgage. I got four mouths to feed. It's just a hobby. All right. So that that cliche OG statement, right? So a great example. I have published quite a few books with a publisher, I get royalties. I've had to take a really hard look at, and if my publisher's listening, which they probably aren't, I love you and I'm still going to make books with you. So it's it's all good. (laughs) But I've had to take a really hard look at that time investment versus the financial return compared to my products that I've developed that I sell on Amazon that nobody but Amazon's taken a cut from. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's a, that's a really good, yeah. um, you know, we, recently Brittany and I have been like working through just all of our, it's the beginning of the year. So we're burning through all of our expenses. Like we're having these very realistic conversations. Like, do I need this? Do I not need the blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that I think is very important that a lot of creatives just miss, it's because they don't, they don't have that builder aspect is what's the return on investment? Like is, you know, my, my time is valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, the time that I take away from my kids and that kind of stuff, except for on Thanksgiving morning, (laughs) my time is valuable. And, uh, you know, is it worth me going through all of this effort to do X and what, you know, what am I getting in return? And that could be things that are tangible, intangible, et cetera. But at the end, you still got to have that net present value in a positive. So yeah. like, and, and a lot of people, I think they just, they get kind of stuck thinking, oh, I'm just going to keep doing the same. That's like, you know, it's a definition yes. of insanity. How do you think somebody would avoid a, just a slow entrepreneurial death? <laughs> That is such a good question. <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm obsessed with this one word and I blame, I, I have to blame because it's, it's, it's one of his famous talking points, Gary Vanderchuk, his word audacity. Um, Gary V on social media, V E E. And um, he talks about audacity. And I do believe that having too much audacity is not only your, your road to slow death in your business, but it could kill you quick. And it's, I, I did a TikTok about it. And it's basically that you, you, you know, the classic archetype is the, you know, I, I run the, I, I run the wedding industry in this town. You, you go through me, you know, I know everybody I'll connect you. I'll connect you. I'll connect you. But what's behind all that pomp. Right. So like what in our business are we, are we having way too much audacity 
you know, humility, just a lack of humility. Right. I think that is number one. You were staring right at me when you said a lack of humility. I'm just was I? That out there. <laughs> I, I actually thought I was staring at my, I don't know. I have something really messed up on my desk over here. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I think I, audacity. And, and that comes in so many forms. Like um, this, you know, this has worked for five years. There, there's got to be, you know, yeah, it's this not is me. how we've always done it. It's not yeah. me. It's not me. It's them. Um, right. Having the audacity in this climate to snub social media. I'm sorry. You don't Did have I to just play. say I was taking a break. <laughs> you, you, you t- no, I'm talking about. You, <laughs> no, but seriously, like having the audacity to be like, well, I don't agree with social media. Therefore, I'm, I'm not going to use it. Like you don't have that choice yeah. in this climate. Yeah. Love it yeah. or hate it. It's here. And it's uh, here. It's not, well, I hate the shit it's out not of going, it too. Yeah. we're not going back and you are going to hate, hate it. You're going to love it. You're going to hate it. You're going to love it. Or maybe yeah. you're, you're going to hate it. But if you hate social media, then don't own a business. You can it's, hate it sometimes. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, there's no avoiding it. It's mm-hmm. just learn to work with it or set set your own personal boundaries with it. Like if it's something that yeah, it's, it's a slippery slope. I can, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You can't avoid it. Otherwise you're going to miss out. Like there's no other, like it is what it is and it's here to stay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about it. It's completely changed websites. Um, I just went through one website redesign, going through another. I feel like my website has gone back a zillion years, but it's what it's what is being dictated by social media and feeds, and you know, it it has it. We're not going back. Yeah, this isn't a phase, right? <laughs> You, can you imagine, this is a point that Gary Vanderchuk made that, can you imagine like back when we went from T, from radio to TV, there are people that are like, oh, it's just a fake. This is just a contraption. Yeah. yeah. No. So one, one question that, that we always like to ask is what is one thing that we didn't ask you that you wish that we would have? Oh man. Anything that you want to talk about? Yeah. Anything. I, well, honestly, I think the one thing that kind of sets me apart a little bit in this industry or a lot maybe is that I, um, I actually niched up during, you know, the P word, (laughs) (laughs) um, we're always told to niche down, niche down, niche down, niche down everything from our business strategy to our social media strategy to, but I actually niched up. So, you know, Momental Designs, my wedding stationery brand is about fine art invitations. And so um, all of my team, including myself, of course, are fine artists. And so when I was left with nothing to do um, in 2020, I kept my team on board full stop, did not limit hours, did not any of that. And we dove headfirst into a, um, a watercolor brand. I love teaching. Um, and so I branched out personally, you know, I'm, I'm the dreamer in both of my brands. So I kind of make sure things are running at 30,000 feet with momental designs, make sure my team knows what they're doing, empowering them. And it's allowed me to just get on the speaking circuit and, um, one of my like superpowers, and I think this is interesting because it goes back to the social media. Um, you know, you've got your what your micro or your your different influencer like spectrum, right? You know, 10k up to 10k and then <laughs> whatever to 50k. So like I am not this like mega influencer, right? But at the same time, I have seen tremendous success from my strategy. And so I actually really enjoy speaking about it and educating about it. And so I am currently developing um, a course (laughs) and some coaching 
um, from that perspective that we need to get, you know, kind of like anti-vanity, uh, social coaching. So gotcha. Yeah. The influencer without the influence. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that, that, you know, um, I, I do need a name. I need a name, but yeah, yeah I was going to say, Brittany, you should have trademarked that shit. What are you doing? <laughs> saying that out loud. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's all about the relationship. Like literally that's what's so important. And, 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 it, and, you know, cause we're talking about structure. I think it's just important to really look at that. Always go back to, and we talked about focus, right? We talked mm-hmm. about like restless reinvention and, you know, focus on the relationship, like pretend you're just writing copy for that one person pretend you're posting for that one person that you're going to answer their question that that has just been driving them insane. Um, And I think when you can function from that, there's real power there. Yeah. I think, um, I think that might be a perfect way to start to bring this to a close. Like that was a very good, I couldn't have written that better. (laughs) (laughs) So Christy, thank you so much for being on today. Uh, I really enjoy, well, we shouldn't say I, we really enjoyed, we you know, <laughs> learning your story, the method, the methods that's driven your success. Uh, you have to keep up with her on Instagram at Momental, uh, her YouTube, which she, she briefly glossed over and didn't mention the fact that she has a hundred thousand followers on her YouTube channel. Almost, it's, almost. <clears throat> oh, but she's close. She's close. Um, it's at paint crush with Christy Rice. And, you know, you, you need to check it out. It's it, it was your tutoring on how to watercolor. So if you're looking for a release or anything, like I'm sure watercoloring is unbelievably pleasant and it's probably good for your mental The way health. I do it, it is. The way <laughs> I do it. I'm like the wild woman in the watercolor YouTubes. Like I, I piss off people left and right because I'm like, Screw the rules. Screw being right. <laughs> Don't listen to that. Listen to me. Paint. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun over there. Yeah. Wow. And make sure you check out. Oh, yeah, check check out our new website uh, at momentaldesigns.com. As always, all of the links will be in the description of the episode. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. And we have two openings left in our mentoring schedule. So don't hesitate to reach out. You know, we really love helping others grow in their small business. So please reach out before those fill up because those will fill up quick. We hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and we will see you in the next couple of weeks. All right, out. Are you backing up your footage? Is it seamless, running in the background and easily available? Bring in Backblaze the world's easiest cloud backup. Our workflow is so simple. We offload our footage onto our external drives. Then that evening, the files automatically start backing up into the cloud. There's nothing else for us to do. Imagine having the peace of mind that your footage is stored off-site in a safe location where you can easily retrieve it from your browser and that it is crazy affordable. That's Backblaze. Click on our affiliate link below and get one month free. Are you tired of aimlessly flipping through mediocre at best music for hours? Do you find yourself wasting valuable time on projects just trying to find that perfect song? Bring in Musicbed. The first time Britt and I looked at their library, I remember saying, we could use any of these. Musicbed has a massive library of elite musicians used by brands like Nike, Samsung, Apple, and ESPN. Having a hard time finding that perfect song? Reach out to a specialist who can help do the searching for you and create a list of songs specifically for your project. Imagine the amount of stress reduction you would have with music selection being a breeze. Imagine how much time you can save during an edit by having a massive library of meticulously selected songs. What would that do for your productivity or quality of life? Musicbed is your solution. Click on our link below to see our hand-selected playlist. Use code WVFB at checkout and get your first month free when you sign up. Musicbed was simply a lifesaver for us.